Hey there, this is Jacob from RoboFlow, here today to talk about YOLO V8. Here you can see an example of YOLO V8 inferring on NBA basketball players. And this is an example of how you can train YOLO V8 with a custom data set to detect objects of interest. So YOLO V8 is the latest iteration of the popular object detection model, YOLO, and it dropped yesterday. And so here we'll go and kind of dive into the history of YOLO and how YOLO V8 was made, and then we'll look a little bit about some initial evaluation of how YOLO V8 is doing against previous models. And then we'll talk about a bit about what you can do now that YOLO V8 is out and what we recommend uh, for things for next steps that you can you can do with the YOLO V8 model. Um, so what is, uh, you know, how, how did YOLO grow into YOLO V8? Well, so originally the YOLO architecture was published in a C repository called Darknet, which was maintained by Joseph Redman, its founder, who when he was working on it as PhD, uh, at University of Washington. Now, this kind of grew into a project where there's a lot of open source contributors and people um, were continuously deving upon the YOLO model. And uh, meanwhile, once you got to the YOLO v3 version, uh, Glenn Jocker started working on shadowing the YOLO v3 version in, in PyTorch. So some, some of you may remember the YOLO v3 PyTorch repo uh, where um, the PyTorch training was starting to replicate uh, the YOLO v3 darknet training. And then it became clear that uh, the, the PyTorch training actually started to surpass that. And so uh, Ultralytics, which is Glenn's company, released YOLO v5, which was the PyTorch version of YOLO v3, essentially with uh, some tweaks and some additional modeling things. And then from there, the community started deving on it. PyTorch made it very convenient for people to be working on the model and you know operating in it. And obviously, Python is a lot better than C. And so uh, it kind of grew in popularity and the community started building on the YOLO v5 repo. Now, a lot of other models were released uh, off of this. So some branched off directly out of this repo that were kind of like essentially forks, like scaled YOLO v4, YOLO r, YOLO v7. These came off uh, from researchers uh, Wang Kin Yu and Alexi AB. And uh, they were, you know, pretty much the same repository, but tweaks to the network and tweaks to some of the modeling routines. Um, and then some emerged in PyTorch just completely external to the YOLO v5 repo. These were like YOLO x and YOLO v6. Um, and so, uh, meanwhile, Ultralytics still had the YOLO v5 repo where people are primarily, you know, the, the main object detection community is working here, even though they're kind of these new versions that are pushing SOTA a little bit further, but they're a lot harder to use. So they're, they're a little bit less used. And then Ultralytics put a lot of work in the last half of this year into researching YOLO v8, which they launched yesterday, um, which pushes, uh, some of the SOTA metrics. So here we'll dive into a little bit about what has changed in the model architecture. So um, you can see here, this is the YOLO model. So the YOLO model has a backbone, which is a series of convolutional uh, layers as you kind of pull the pixels down into different resolution uh, sizes, essentially. And then that's those features are passed through uh, a neck where they're pulled together and then they're put into a head, which is used to make the detections. And the detections uh, are based on loss metrics. So the traditional YOLO has a uh, box loss a class loss and an objectness loss. And uh, YOLO V8 does a number of iterations on improving uh, this loss function at the end and then the way these boxes are detected. So the biggest thing about YOLO V8, in my opinion, is that it's anchor free. So this means that uh, YOLO V8 does not predict based on bounding box anchors, which is what the other models used to do, where you would have some sort of anchor bounding box and then you make some prediction uh, from an XY off of that anchor box. But this is notoriously tricky because what if you have a data set where your uh, objects are a lot skinnier like manta rays or maybe they're really tall and thin like giraffes and uh, then you'd need to be kind of like uh, making an algorithm to auto set these anchors based on your training set that can get complicated and actually a lot of models wouldn't do that they would just uh, model on coco and they wouldn't do anything with their anchor boxes um, but now um, yellow v5 doesn't have those uh, small medium and large anchor boxes rather it just has this so we can look at the, the Netron uh, app. So I recommend opening up the Onyx files for YOLO v5, YOLO v8. And you can kind of look at the layers and look at how things have changed. And here you can see that uh, there's really just one main output head here now in the new model. And then here, if you look at uh, the YOLO v5 model, you have three different uh, head sizes. So that's, in my opinion, probably the biggest change. And then the loss obviously changed as a result of uh, experimenting with that. The other thing is there's a new convolutional layer. So this uh, is basically where YOLO V8 is uh, improving on the way that the backbone and different convolutions are, are made in the network. And um, 
you can kind of dive in there and you can actually dive into the PyTorch code if you want to look more into that. Um, and then, um, and, and in this blog, we have a nice diff of uh, where the research was done. So you can, you can look at, you know, the different ways that the, the code was constructed. And uh, the, the next big thing, so this is a, this is a augmentation related thing. So when you're actually training these models, you're going through and you're uh, calculating, um, you know, you're making small perturbations to the images uh, each time you go through the e epochs, that's known as online augmentation. And one of those augmentations is called mosaic aug, which is where you put four images together. So you uh, take four images and you stitch them together like like so. And uh, that that is a pretty good technique because it makes your network learn different locations of where the objects are. And then maybe you need to learn a little bit of object occlusion. And maybe you need to learn to predict an object on like slightly different backgrounds and things like that. It seems, seems to be a pretty good technique. But it's been found empirically, you know, that you should actually close Mosaic Cog before you finish training. That's because maybe your validation set really isn't mosaic at the end of the day. It's just a good convenient technique to do in the main body of training. Um, and this is a good example of something that Yellow V5 and Yellow V8 have been uh, very good at is looking at the practical things around the neural network, not just the architecture. And so closing closing Mosaic Og is actually you know a pretty big thing to have into the code repository. Now let's dive a little bit into the accuracy. So uh, the Yellow V8 uh, Coco accuracy. So Coco is kind of the main benchmark that people use in object detection, which is uh, some 80 classes of common objects like TV and person and bicycle. Um, and it's a pretty good, it's a good benchmark released by Microsoft, and it gives you a proxy of how things are doing. So in terms of that, the Yellow V8 models improve on their Yellow V5 predecessors by somewhere like 25 to 30% MAP per uh, relative to model size and, and speed of inference. And so that that's pretty good. Um, and it's more stark for the smaller models uh, that got improved. When you get up to the larger models, it's more like a 5% improvement or so on, on the MAP uh, val. But this is uh, considered to be state of the art for object detection now. So that's an exciting thing, um, especially um, to have you know the code in, in, in this repository to be getting those kind of numbers. Now here's another angle at things that we take at RoboFlow. So we have uh, this benchmark called RoboFlow 100, which is uh, a set of 100 data sets from RoboFlow Universe, which has over 100,000 data sets of uh, people uh, like you and various computer vision practitioners working on their own data sets. And so we constructed this benchmark to more accurately answer the question of how well is this model gonna work on my own custom data set? So Coco's a decent eval, but it's a single data set. And there's a lot of different ways that data manifests itself and there's different domains uh, that your, your data may, may fall into. So uh, we evaluated this on RF100 and this is the result that really was the most exciting to me. So you can see here, we have the average scores for Yellow V5, Yellow V7 and Yellow V8. So the interesting thing here to start off the bat is that Yellow V7 actually did worse on average across these 100 data sets than Yellow V5 did, uh, pointing to the fact that even though Yellow V5 might've pushed soda on Coco, uh, it still wasn't generalizing the practical data sets as well as Yellow V5 was. But now Yellow V8 really pulls up all the data sets um, on how they do um, relative to Yellow V5, which is means there's there's kind of the stark, and if you look at it on a data set by data set basis, there's the stark improvement on all data sets, um, either getting pretty similar to what they got on Yellow V5 or a market improvement, which is uh, pretty impressive to see that kind of uh, performance, uh, uh, improved performance across the board. Um, and then another way to look at this is you can look at it broken down by uh, imagery type. So uh, here you can see Yellow V8 is still winning across the board of the RF100 data sets. Um, the last thing I wanna talk about is a little bit about the Yellow V8 repository. So this uh, new repository is sort of gonna be a place where people can collaborate on the network, very similar to the way Yellow V5 was. Um, and it's exciting to see how the community will rally around this. I think the best case scenario is that a lot of people who are previously working on these forks of Yellow V5 uh, will actually do their research in that repository and then hopefully those neural networks will get loaded in. And I, I know that uh, Glenn and Ayush have been working uh, pretty steadily to make this repository very friendly to use. So they have uh, basically released uh, CLI, which is similar to the way we used to use Yellow V5. You can use it on the command line and uh, there's different tasks. So you can detect, you can classify and you can segment and then you can train, predict, or val. And then um, in the Python package, you can do the same operations, except natively in your own Python code. So you get both of these when you pip install 
Ultralytics, and that's going to be a pretty nice thing for people uh, to operate under as they use the new networks. Now, the last thing uh, I want to talk about is what should you know, do now that you know a little bit more about Yellow V8 and you're ready to get started with it. So the first thing we have is we have a how to train Yellow V8 on a custom data set, and this will be linked in the video. And this is if you want to get started with your hands on with your own data set. You could do something like we did with the uh, basketball players here, or you could do, you know, whatever your data set is. Um, and then also uh, another thing I, I think you should check out is uh, checking out Rovelo Universe for uh, Yellow V8 models that are on uh, on Rovelo Universe. So you can see here all the public projects of things that people are doing um, on Yellow V8. So you know tennis and robots and football players, all that sorts of stuff. And then the last thing um, you know that I, I, I want to point to is that you can actually deploy your Yellow V8 model now on Roboflow. So you can uh, train uh, on a custom data set and then you can upload those weights uh, back to Roboflow and then you get all the different Roboflow deployment patterns uh, that you may or may not be familiar with, which is host API that scales to infinity and uh, edge dockers that are optimized for uh, various hardware types, which is a nice way that you can work on your data set in Roboflow and you can deploy it. So you can create an active learning loop around Yellow V8 and uh, really create a really great production system uh, that will take your model to new heights. So uh, thanks for uh, watching this video. If you liked it, uh, please like and subscribe and we'll see you in the next one.